Welcome Forex traders, welcome to my live trading room. Uh, this is where I trade systems such as day trading, swing trading, and the Four Horsemen. And if you want to know how I trade those systems, I have links in the description below. Um, and uh, so the p purpose of these systems is to take all the human factor uh, emotions out, which is the main thing that's holding beginner traders back from making a real profit. Um, so first off, what I want to do is I want to get into the stats in where we are. Uh, this is so far since I've been trading live here with you folks. Um, so it's been about seven weeks or so back. So I've been tracking this for the past seven weeks live here with you folks and it's an ongoing basis. So it's a new channel, but uh, we're, you know, I want to make sure that uh, I don't do anything without you without doing it uh, live here with you on, on this recording. So um, we are currently sitting, uh, this is our equity curve on our day trades. And uh, we were sitting through a little bit of a drawdown. And I said, not need to worry. We have our stops, our, um, we, we take small, small losses and big wins. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, is our swing trade, a little bit of a drawdown right now. But don't worry, we take small losses and we get big wins. And uh, we are going through a little bit of a drawdown right now on the four horsemen. Again, same rules apply. Small losses, big wins. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. But I have a big announcement. Um, I already made that announcement uh, on my last video, but I want to show you a little bit more about it. So uh, it is a uh, live trading, um, man like, a, like, a, like a managed account. So basically what, like my, my main account is the master account, and then you can subscribe to um, having your MT4 linked through a third party. And this is this is I have that link below, but this is how you do it. when you click on the link, you go to uh, Social Traders Tools, which is the third party, um, and you create an account with them, and then you can follow my signal, which is a um, and I'll and you'll see here during my trading, um, I have two different accounts. You'll see I'll, I'll show you when I place a trade that it immediately um, picks up on the on the other account. So. You link your MT4 account. Now, here's the thing: you have to have a broker that has uh, variable spreads and that has a um, an option to hedge. Uh, these U.S. brokers uh, basically, you know, you have to do a FIFO, which is first in, first out, and it doesn't work with this system. So, I do have links below on uh, two brokers that you can use. One of them is a broker that. Uh, almost anybody can use except for U.S. clients. The other one does accept does accept U.S. clients. So I, I place those links below, and you can choose from one of those brokers. I've used both of them for a while. I've I am a profitable trader, obviously, and I've uh, pulled money out of there no problem. I had no issues. Never um, known of anybody that had any issues with them. So I put both of those links below. But I give you two options here. Um, so if you click on follow the signal. Again, this is uh, this is only one week's worth of data on here because I had to switch accounts in order to uh, have a master account on here. But if you want to see all my stats, um, I do have that on my FX book and uh, my FX blue blue book as well. So, but anyways, um, so you can do one month subscription for forty nine dollars a month, or you can do a year and it comes out to like thirty seven dollars a month for for the full year. But here's the deal. Um, yeah, you get to um, have me trade because I trade all night long. I trade all day long. Um, and if you have a job or whatnot, you you know you what you can do is I'll trade your account. And then if you want to see the trades I made, you know that were that popped up in your account, you come on YouTube and you watch the video recording that I post every day on on why I traded that made those trades or why I didn't take certain trade setups or whatnot. So that's a pretty cool, um, that's pretty cool how you have your managed account and then you get to see your account manager uh, do a recap on, on the trades they made on your account. So that's that right now. Uh, prices will be going up. This is just an introduction offer that I'm making. And uh, with that being said, if you folks are interested in how we trade on how I trade, let's go. All right, so it is Sunday, the 20th 
of December at 2.36 p.m. my time, which is Arizona time. Um, we are sitting about 24 minutes out from the New York, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the uh, Tokyo Open Sunday afternoon. And let's go ahead and look into the possibilities of trade setups. We'll minimize. These are my two brokerage accounts right here uh, for MT4. Now, this is my Forex.com brokerage account that I use for uh, th this is not um, uh, with their platform. I can't link it. So so the uh, this two systems I will trade um, through the managed account is day trading and swing trading. The four horsemen is not. But uh, anyways, if you do want to know how I trade the four horsemen, that the link is in the description below on that one. So it looks like uh, EuroCAD is right up here at the M3. To get my pen working here. Okay. So we are going to be opening up right near M3 unless there's a gap in the market. Uh, looks like we're going to be opening up near M3 also for the Australian yen. We're uh, in between the uh, central pivot and the M3 for the Euro Yen, and we're pretty close to the M3 on the USD CAD. Uh, a couple of uh, changes that I have made, I've decreased the amount on, um, on my CAD, um, and I've spread out that increase to my Euro CAD, my Australian Yen, and my Euro Yen just because of the performances that the uh, USD CAD has, been, has, has had over the past uh, several months. So um, if I do have another bad performance this week, I'll, I'll decrease this even more and spread it out amongst these other three systems. That's as far as lot, lot size goes. Okay, so that's our plan uh, for the uh, four horsemen. Let's go ahead and go into the swing trading Let's go ahead and pull that up. I need the swing trading full pivots here. Okay, we'll go one by one on this. All right, so the uh, pound US dollar is not eligible. The Australian US dollar uh, is only eligible for a short because we have reached uh, the monthly take profit zone and we are right there. Um, we are, this is my M3 right here. So, I mean, we're, we're looking like we're right there. Uh, let's see here. The USD CAD I do trade. Okay. And that one's only eligible for a buy because we have reached the um, bearish take profit zone. And my M2 is right down here. So, we're pretty far away from that. And uh, the Euro USD is eligible only for a short. So, whoop. Go ahead and uh, enlarge that one. And uh, we are at the M3 right here. Okay. And uh, the Euro Yen is eligible only for short because we reached the monthly take profit zone. We'll enlarge that one. Uh, we're closer to central pivot than we are to M3. This is where price is at right now. This is where M3 is going to be up there. And uh, the CAD yen is not eligible. The Australian yen is eligible. So we'll go ahead and enlarge that one. That one only for a short. Just because we um, have reached the take profit zone. And we are really close to the M3 as well on this one. Right here. Okay. And uh, the, CAD, or the uh, pound yen is eligible. And let's go ahead and enlarge that one. Okay, and this one's eligible on both ends. As you can see, we have not reached the uh, take profit zone. So those are the ones. The ones that are enlarged are the ones that are eligible. Okay, uh, so we are still about 18 minutes out. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and then next thing you know, we'll be uh, at the Tokyo Open. You know, one thing I do want to share with you, though, is uh, this is my broker... I'm gonna do this here. Let's go a, like a side by side type of deal. This is my broker uh, for my main account, for my master account. And this is one of the uh, accounts that follow. 
and it's right over here so um, you're gonna see you're gonna see uh, that when I place a trade you're gonna see a pop-up on this broker as well so this is uh, Hugo's way right here and then this is traders way right here and I'll, I'll bring I'll show you both of these As soon as we make a trade okay so let's uh, actually bring this into my Hugo's way let's go with this guy right here this one here okay so this is my Hugo's way right here okay and uh, just for the sake of we'll go like this here we'll drag this on over in front of the CAD yen because the CAD yen I won't be trading this with Hugo's way and then with traders way I will also drag this on over but I'm going to offset it a little bit so you can see the difference okay so that's going to be my traders way and that one's the Hugo's way and I'll just flip it back and forth like this okay and you'll see as soon as my, I make a trade it will pop up here as well okay All right, we're about five minutes out. Again, I have the Trader's Way. And this is the copy the count, just so that way you see how it works. This is uh, Hugo's Way. So I got Trader's Way, where I'll be making the trades from the master account. And Hugo's Way. And I went ahead and removed all the, uh, oh, except for this one. I need to remove the one-click trading on there because this is just a copied account. All right, and let's go, let's drop, uh, drop these and we'll go into the four horsemen first. So I just wanna add on a couple things about the, uh, about if you have a copied account and you have it linked up to my master account is it doesn't matter what, what size that you have. Um, I would definitely recommend that you have any, um, anything over $1,000 uh, in your account. But um, so if, even if you have, let's say a, a $20,000 account, um, what it's going to do is it's going to recognize the the size that you have and it's going to adjust the lot size according to the size account that you have and you have uh, you can adjust the uh, um, the risk tolerance that you want as well so if you want to trade twice the amount of risk as I do you can adjust that um, through um, the uh, third party or you can reduce the risk um, to less than what I use so all that is uh, is you can toggle between that but um, yeah so whenever I trade Whenever I place a trade, the uh, the account the amount that I'm using is um, subjective towards whatever size that you, account that you have. All right, so we are about 15 seconds out. Let's take a look, see if there's any gaps. I know that uh, stimulus is on the table right now. All right, five seconds. All right, a little bit of a gap down. All right, so USD CAD's a sell. And I will adjust that stop here shortly. But uh, everything else is not yet. Let's go ahead and um, place a pending order right here for the Euro CAD. All right, so uh, five, six, six, one, two. Okay, and then we'll adjust the stop later. Okay, that's my sell order. And then I need to put a uh, alert down here as a 5585. Two seven five six for the alert here. Okay. And we're just too far away from anything right now for the Australian yen and Euro yen. 
So I have those two immediate ones on right now. Let's go ahead and uh, show you Hugo's way. I have no orders in my book right now. Let's go to Trader's way. Okay, so I have uh, the gap down on the Australian US dollar. So this one is no more eligible. Uh, the USD CAD is eligible for short. And I will adjust that stop accordingly. Uh, nothing anymore for the Euro USD. We gap down. Let's go ahead and bring that out. And we'll bring this one out since we already went into that one. Uh, we open up at central pivot on the Euro Yen. So I'm bringing that one out. Uh, we open up on central pivot for the Australian Yen. So I'm taking that one out. And, oh, look at this right here. That's, that one's a buy on the uh, pound. Pound Yen to gap down onto the M2. So we have two new entries. We're going to play stops here shortly on those, but I want to show you Hugo's way. So that's Trader's way. Did Hugo's way not open? Hugo's way did not open. There we go. Okay, we got them both in there. Um, that was weird. I had to reset the Hugo's way. Okay, so anyways, we have them both in here. Um, as you can see here, the lot sizes are different um, because it adjusts according to the size of the account. So here they are. Those are the same exact entries as I have placed on my Trader's Way account, but the lot sizes is different because the size of the account is different. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, look here, no stop loss, and there's no take profit yet, right? I need to update update that with my Trader's Way account. First off, we're going to go cycle through one more time. We're going to go into my, uh, first we're going to drop the Trader's Way down, and we're going to drop the Hugo's Way down. Um, and then we're going to check, see where we're at right now. We are... Um, Still okay on the Euro Yen and Aussie Yen. Let's go into my Trader's Way and select my stops. And I need to adjust my take profits on my day trades. So just give me one moment here. We'll go ahead and do our stops here first. So I need to do my stop for the USD CAD, which is here. Let's go ahead and open this one up. And uh, we are selling it. So we need to have a stop just above the resistance level. In fact, I need to close out of this one. Yeah, I do need to close out of this one. Uh, it's an eligible. I was so excited about showing you how this works, but uh, yeah, it's not eligible because we already hit the uh, take profit zone down here. So we'll give that one a couple seconds and then we'll close out of it. Uh, but I do need to place um, my, so I'm just gonna do this for just just so that you folks can see what's going on here. I place the take profit zone down there. And uh, so those two are in, and then I'm gonna be doing the uh, pound yen. So let's go ahead and go into the pound yen. And that one is a stop loss that I will need to place below here. And my take profit, let's go ahead and uh, zoom out on this one now. I don't need to be zoomed in so much. And we're gonna place the take profit zone. This is small. So I'm going to place it all the way up at the monthly take profit. There we go. All right. So I have, you can see here, I have both the uh, take profit and stop losses in here. And uh, let's go ahead and look at Hugo's way. And there you go. The take profit and stop loss are both in there now. There we go. Okay. We 
go ahead and cycle back over real quick. We'll drop down the Hugo's way. We'll drop down the Trader's way. And uh, USD CAD. Once, once the uh, I'm monitoring this closely. I will play stops. But what happens is sometimes with the really wide spread uh, during the first hour is um, it can gap because there's so much there's there's such few such small amount of liquidity it can gap and hit, it can hit a stop um, once this, you know I'm I'm gonna monitor this manually but once the spread narrows then I'll be able to place a stop and, and feel safe with it uh, what I do want to do is um, I do want to. Uh, watch here the Australian yen closely and the euro yen closely um, and uh, yeah those those ones can jump rather quickly um, especially with the low liquidity like this we already get a sizable move on the euro upwards let's see here yeah it's a really small pivot zone so we're not going to be making a whole lot or losing a whole lot this week on those Go ahead and drop on over to Trader's Way. Um, as soon as uh, I get a slight bit of a pullback on the uh, USD CAD, I I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that one. And this is only going to be end up being one swing trade for this week. And then we'll drop into our day trades and adjust those take profit zones. So this one is going to be the uh, pound yen. This one's uh, order number 0055. This one is the M2. And then let's go ahead and uh, adjust. Let's go ahead and drop on over to my day trading charts now. Okay, so here we go. We're uh, sitting at break even right now on the USD CAD, and I'm closing it. Now let's go ahead and look at Hugo's way. Make sure it's closed over there too. Look at that, it's closed. Okay, perfect. Now let's go ahead and pull back over to Trader's way, and let's go into day trading full pivots. And we'll go into my Hugo's way um, full pivots also. Day trading. And what I will need to do here is I'm going to get rid of these one click trading because I don't need it. One, one click trading. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. Get rid of all this. That way I don't accidentally make trades on the, the account that's being managed by my master account. And we'll slide that on over and uh, one click trading and I'll make sure to save down this profile here. All right, so oh, nope, that's my trader's way. It's my Hugo's way. So uh, profile, save profile as, and this is gonna be my day trading full pivots. Okay, yes. Okay, so let's go back to my trader's way. And uh, so I need to adjust the uh, pound yens take profit, which is this one here, which is, yep, exactly where it's supposed to be. All right, let's see here. Let's get enlarge this. I should have a take profit. Okay, so this is a take profit for here, and I think there's, I think I have other, what number is that, 06? Okay, so that's that one, okay. Um, now where is my take profit for the, for my swing trade? Five, five. This one right here. What's my stop loss? Where's my five five take profit? 
Okay, it's way up here. Okay, I got it. So my take profit for my swing trade is way up there. And uh, this is my going to be my take profit for my day trade right here. There we go. Okay. And that's the day trade for this guy. It's way back, way back over here. Okay. So that's that one. So I knocked that one out. And then the Australian US dollar is 7277. And the tick profit for this one is going to be higher. Going to do the M5 on this one. And uh, I'm going to take this actually into my, let's see here, Australian US dollar. Give it uh, 20 periods. Okay, so today's range. Yeah, it's not extremely small, but it's it's not. Uh, so yeah, I have it at a decent level right now at the M5 for a tick profit on that on the Australian US dollar. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get out of that. Go back to my full pivots. And then I need to adjust the take profit on the Australian yen. So let's go ahead and open that one. All right, on my day trade. And uh, well, you know, let's go ahead and take this into my Australian yen and take a look at 20 periods back. Okay, this is today. And uh, it is a little bit of a smaller zone. Let's take it all the way at the um, right between R2 and M5, but the weekly take profit right there. Okay, so I feel comfortable with that. And let's get back into my day trading full pivots. All right, there we go. And let's go back to the four horsemen. So minimize the. Um, here goes away. I'll minimize my trader's way. And uh, sitting in uh, break even right now for the uh, USD CAD. Well, let's go ahead and move this on over because I realize that you guys can't see my entry over there. So I'll slide that one all the way over for you. All right. I think you can see it now. My entry is right up in here. And um, and this is the red line is my um, alert for my central pivot. I'll place that right on over there. Okay. I still have a pending order open right now on the EuroCAD. And uh, watching closely here on the Euro Yen, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is I'm just going to pause the video. And if I have any reaction out of the Euro Yen or the Australian Yen, then I'll go ahead and start recording again. All right, so quickly, I'm going to go ahead and play around with the, the, this uh, managed account here real quick with our um, account that's following it. Let's uh, take a look here at the uh, Pound Yen. Um, so the stop down here is on my new trade for the for the swing trade is at one two one four two two three nine. We'll take a look at the secondary count and one four two two three nine. And let's go ahead and adjust it on the fly here, which is uh, this stop right here. So we're going to go ahead and move it up, and you can see how the uh, stop loss has changed to. Uh, so this is my stop right here, 138418. Let's go ahead and check it on here. 138418. Let's go ahead and adjust it back over here, which is this one here. We're going to pull it back below and uh, stop 138303 and then stop 138303.
Nothing doing on the four horsemen yet. It is uh, 345. All right, so a little update here. Unfortunately, on my day trades from last week, I did just get knocked out from a, uh, a spike down. I, I, I had my trade at break even. Let's go ahead and adjust this. Uh, this has to be below. There we go. So my stop on the pound yen is 256. Just check it on Hugo's. 256. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, I did get just now on this wick right here that came down. I got stopped out at break even uh, for my day trade from back in here. So that's that, unfortunately. But uh, hey, you know, that's what reduction of risk is all about. So I will remove that from the books. Go back into eight. Okay, so we have um, here in about ten seconds the closing of the candle. Here we go, perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my stops. I'm gonna put it on pause here real quick and take care of some housekeeping. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and place my stops now for the uh, EuroCAD. And the uh, USD CAD. All right, there we go. I went ahead and updated those stop losses. And uh, what I wanted to do is I want to go ahead and place my pending orders for the uh, Australian Yen and the Euro Yen. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and do so now. All right, it took me a couple minutes, but I have everything all set up. I have all the stops, all my pending orders on all my alerts um, here for all the pairs. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that now and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move back on over to Trader's Way. And yeah, we did have that big spike down. Did stop me out of the day trade for the pound yen, but uh, I'm still in on the uh, swing trade on that one. Let's see, what else am I? I still have my day trades on for my Australian, uh, Australian yen. My day trades coming back from here. And uh, I have my stop just below it. Same thing with the uh, Aussie dollar. I have my day trades from back in here. It's about break even right now, and I have my stop jammed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this into. Well, you know what? Um, I am going to uh, draw out the boxes for today and get that all set up too. All right, so it's going to be right here. So a nice bounce off central pivot would do well. There we go. That's that one. And the Aussie Yen. I'm going to slide this on over to my USD CAD since I don't day trade that. And uh, so this one's going to be right over here. And then my Hugo's way is going to end up being all the way over to the right and up. So we'll go like that. Okay. All right. And uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and draw the box for the Australian yen. And it's going to look like this. It's got a lot of work to do. Got to get the uh, show a bounce off central pivot. All right. CAD yen. We're sitting right on the M2 right now. So we'll see if we bounce here. And get above all this. Okay. All 
right and the uh, euro yen is up here so we'll see if we get a bounce off the uh, central pivot The uh, euro US dollar. Alright, we're sitting above central pivot. First, we need to bounce off central pivot. Alright, and uh, let's see here the Australian dollar. We need to bounce off central pivot first, which we looks like we actually did get right down in here. So it's being hidden right now by the by this uh, change of day line right here, but we do actually have a candle wick that that came down right down the central pivot. Okay, so we'll go ahead and minimize that, and then the pound dollar. We will need a bounce, and then our M2 for the day all the way up to central pivot makes that box. All right, there we go. So we'll we'll check back uh, on in at the uh, London Open on those. But what I am going to do is I'm going to flip it on over to this uh, risk on mode right here. And my hue goes away. It's going to go to risk on as well. And what I'm going to do is remove all of these one click trading. Don't need those. You can see the order right here on uh, Hugo's way. Okay, Trader's way. It is uh, 421, so an hour and 20 minutes into the uh, new session. All right, so I just got a, an alert for the uh, Australian Yen. And uh, it's making a go for my M2, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this pending order here. And we're going to make uh, my alert. Oh, man, what is this? Let's go ahead and remove this alert here. And we're going to adjust this alert for central pivot, which is uh, All right, as an update, um, I was on the phone, so I wasn't able to do one, but uh, my AUD JPY went ahead and took off the uh, order. It actually came down and just missed my entry order. You can see here that uh, this is my M2. This is where the candle wick came. I mean, just missed it. Came right back up to central pivot, I, and I removed the order on that one. Send in drawdown right now with the uh, USD CAD. Time is 5.12 p.m. Okay, just got an alert for the Euro Yen. Making it go for the M2. All right, let's go ahead and remove that, um, the trade on the other end. I'm going to go ahead and move this alert down to just above central pivot because with the spread, so we want it to go to uh, 
Uh, right, no. That's incorrect. Uh, 464. 126464. Okay, there we go. It's coming down to the entry right now. All right, once again, our CAD stopped us out. Just go ahead and mark that down. Today is the 20th. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start marking out trade setups. So we have uh, the possibility of a trade set up right here, perfectly right on, uh, right on my M2. Just go ahead and mark that out. And this thing is getting harder to uh, to use nowadays. There it is. Try and do this without grabbing my stop. Okay, there we go. Trade set up right on the M2. Uh, is falling below it on the CAD yen, and um, pretty pretty close here. Pretty close to the M2 there. Central pivot for the euro, and uh, this all is uh, they're the Dems are doing a press conference about the stimulus, so we might be uh, catching some traction here. It looks like they're going to be passing it tonight. All right. Bounce on the central pivot for the Australian US dollar. And right at the M2. So we have a lot of possible trade setups right now. There we go. So we'll uh, we'll keep track of all those. So I got uh, one, two, three, four, five possible trade setups. We'll see if the pound yen can recover and, and come back above the M2. So far, it uh, just keeps uh, falling. Go back to the uh, black charts. All right, I just had the EuroCAD trigger for a short. We'll go ahead and uh, adjust this here. And then uh, I do need to make sure that my stop is an associated stop. my stop down from here all right so this here is at uh, 57268 57268 Okay, this is going to be my associate stop, and I'll get rid of this one right now. Thing is, is that uh, you you can't change it to an associate stop until the, the the trade is actually triggered. Okay, so that's our stop right there. Okay, so we're in on that one. Let's remove my alert here for the CAD. There we go. Just taking a quick update here. Our day trade from the other day is pretty much break even, break even on both the Australian dollar and the Australian and the Australian yen, and a drawdown on the CAD yen for swing trade. Uh, that gap just has not filled. It's a pretty big one.
Okay, it is uh, 6.42 p.m. and I just had a trade trigger for the Euro Yen. Let's go ahead and pull down this entry right here. If I can grab it. All right, so this stop, uh, I need to make it associated stop. So it's a 125912. This one. Right, there we go. We're getting a big move down. Oh, the pound yen so close to stopping the stout. So is the Australian yen. Yeah, so a little bit of uh, buy the rumor, sell the news type of deal with uh, stimulus, for sure. It's okay, we have tight stops. All right, so we are about a fraction of a pip away from taking that stop. There we go, we just took it on the uh, pound. Pound yen. Yep. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and mark that out. Uh, the the uh, market's starting to go nuts right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, mark that off for our swing trade. is number zero zero five five okay and the drawdown continues on the swing trades so I'm glad I didn't have too many of those this week just that one, uh, the smallest of day trade stop outs. 7232 is the AUD JPY. This one is. really small all right unfortunately because it was looking good for a while there um, and that's it Let's check my floating yeah let's see here so yeah I uh, I also have a tight stop here on the Australian US dollar and uh, we'll see that might just knock us out of everything and and uh, we may have a barrel market for the week so we'll see all right, it's uh, 7.51 p.m., and uh, I didn't realize that I had a cam camera issue, so I'm picking up. Uh, we're going to do some uh, review of where we left off. We did get stop out for a small stop out here. I'll show you on the uh, Euro Yen. Uh, I'll show you where we're at. Okay, so this is where we are for the uh, Euro, for the um, Four Horsemen. Still sitting through that drawdown right now unfortunately and we did have uh, this day trade stop out right here so this is our current drawdown we are out of everything at the moment so the bear market is uh, at least for now is here you can see uh, we had some pretty big price moves down so maybe we're just uh, resetting but um, we'll uh, we'll wait for the markets to start to turn bullish until we trade again that's where we're at. Wow, again, look at this move. Quite a bit of uh, price action here this Sunday.
All right. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and go into it is 1 a.m. And uh, I'm going to get some more sleep if uh, nothing is going on in the market. I'm going to take this over to uh, the white full pivots. This is my copied account right here, but I'm going to use it for my alerts. So uh, let's see here. Where's my pivots? You'd have to come up above here. Okay, so uh, yeah, the the closest one would be the can. Well, we're so far from everything else. Um, yeah, I don't think anything's going to happen here in the next uh, couple of hours. So we'll go ahead and just take this back on over. Okay. It's wabbit season. It's drawdown season. It's wabbit season. It's drawdown season. It's wabbit season. It's drawdown season. All right. Took the stop on the Eurocad. Drawdown season. Uh, there's no golden ticket in trading. There is no golden ticket in trading. Uh, drawdowns happen. This one's a little bit deeper one now. It's about 10% drawdown, which is fine with me. I mean, I would rather it not go more than 10%. Look at the CAD. <whistles> Holy, wow. Look at this. Australian yen. Man. Yeah, we got out uh, right here. We got in right here. Actually, we got in a little bit higher. We got in right here. We got out right there. For a stop out. Mm, this one here. We got in here. We got out here. Uh, Eurocad. Yeah, Eurocad. That one's disappointing. Very disappointing. But anyways, uh, yeah. There is no golden ticket in trading. Uh... You know, I see a lot of, um, <clears throat> I see a lot of, uh, fake stuff out there that says win 99% of trades or, uh, you know, but there's, there's no such thing. So this is all a fact of trading and uh, you have to be able to withstand drawdowns and it's about how you manage yourself during drawdowns, uh, that make a difference. So... I've lived through many, 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 many drawdowns in my life uh, during trading, and uh, this doesn't this doesn't uh, sway me from trading my system. Um, what you do is you reduce the amount that you trade until your drawdown comes out. Okay, so this one was this was uh, the bigger hit right here oh. okay so uh, 20 December this is a, let's go into my USD CAD By the way, it is 4.46 a.m. Woke up uh, at 1 a.m., <clears throat> saw that the market hasn't turned bullish, put a few alerts on there. I, th I think uh, I even recorded also 
um, and then didn't see anything happening bullishly, so I went back to sleep. Woke up again at 2, did the same thing. So, Euro Yen. Yeah, Eurocad's been in a drawdown for a while. Yeah. <clears throat> the worst one, though, is this one. This is the worst one, USD CAD. I even reduced that amount by, yeah, by a significant amount. Okay, so. Most finance charges, not much. Oops, I did it wrong. Too early. Okay, so that's it for the week on that. Let's go ahead and see if, how that shows up on my brokerage account. Let me give this a quick refresh. I think it might have already showed up. Oh yeah, there it is. You see that dip down right there. That was the drawdown. Ooh. That's the last one I just marked right there. Yeah. I remember uh, in the beginning I had a drawdown that went below my um, my original deposit. I was like, oh man, something's got to change here. Oh, and it did. Right, anyways.
just take taking a look at uh, the day trades. I think the only one that uh, has not fallen below the M2 is the Euro Yen. And yeah, so we briefly fell below the M2 right here, but this is a possible trade setup. So we're going to go ahead and see if that holds above. And it might be uh, something for tomorrow. Yeah. Let me mark that out. I'll take a look at everything else. This is my M2 way up here. M2. M2. So we hit target weekly. Target weekly. Target weekly. That's for the bears. That's the downside. We, we don't trade to the downside. Target weekly. M2. Target weekly. M2. And uh, target weekly is down here. This is M2 right here for the Euro USD. So we're we're uh, we're coming up and we're kicking off the M2. to we'll see if that holds. Enlarge the euros here. Oh, you can't see it now. Yep, this is my M2 right here. And let's take a look at the Euro USD. And this is my my M2 right here. This is, uh, resistance right here. You can see price action. Look at the way it bounced off of uh, off of uh, the central pivot. Came through. Came up. Bounced off central pivot. Broke M2. So this is a, a nice bearish setup for the bears. Go bears. Go ahead, it's your turn. Do what you gotta do. I'll be waiting. Make your money. Make your money, I'll be back. It's your turn and then soon it will be mine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move this over since we're not going to have a little a trade for a while. All right, and uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin. So remember, uh, Bitcoin on the other end is the dollar, and if the dollar is strengthening, then Bitcoin should go down against the. Uh, okay, so yes. Go ahead and zoom out just a little bit on this. All right, so this is what we were talking about, the uh, cascading effect. So be prepared for a possible real dip on this one. Uh, we had that big, huge breakout on the other video, and I was saying that uh, we may get one of these type of deals. Where you get uh, the cascading, all the stops hitting. Stop, stop, stops. Uh, all the leverage longs hitting the stops and it cascades down. So, <clears throat> this here could be something more like that. Well, of course, it can't go back in time. This is, uh, here, let me redraw this here. So, this here is like a. Uh, it can either drop like this, um, or something more likely in crypto is that we get like a head and shoulders pattern. And then we get the drop and then the return. 
back. So, um, yeah, uh, this is a uh, complex head and shoulders pattern. It's not a clean head and shoulders. You get like the complex, which means that it has like multiple waves of, uh, of the head and, and shoulders. But uh, yeah, you you do need you do need the retracements because you do need the the uh, stronger money to get in at a better rate. They're all down here. <clears throat> they're they're lo they're located lower. You have you know all this right here is uh, the weaker hands that that get in, and they're the ones that always lose money because they're in here, here, and here, and uh, they're the ones that you know uh, panic quickly they use all the high leverage um, and uh, so the smart money knows that they're, they're sitting down here or they're, they're even farther down because they're, they're waiting for these lows to break you know so you got some orders are in here for a buy you got if some that are going to be sitting in here and then you have even more 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 orders sitting down here so it's kind of like that you get the smaller um, they, you have their initial entries for a long there are uh, more entries for a long and then even uh, larger entries for a long. So you have the opposite. So you have all the uh, dumb money that's getting out, getting out, getting out, getting out, getting out. And these guys are getting in, getting in, getting in, getting in, getting in. platforms running slow today yeah see you can see the stop starting to get hit this is my four hour chart here is my four hour 21 so you are going to see some maybe a some response right here at the 21 and then I have a 55, so this is my this is my uh, 21 right here. That can hold, possible. And then this is my 55, that 21 breaks. And then I got a 200 right down in here. This is also going to be support right in through here. This, this is all support zone. So we could have something that comes down into here like this. We can even have something that comes all the way through and then comes back in. But if this if this twenty one holds, um, if this twenty one holds, then we might even get another leg up. But eventually we do have to. Uh, price does need does need to crash down to pick up uh, new new buy orders, stronger hands. The longer the longer it uh, the longer it takes, it, the the harder it falls. So we'd rather these corrections to happen sooner than later. All right, let's take a quick update here. It's uh, New York open right now. Let's get into uh, our euros because those are the only ones that I'm watching right now. And it looks to me like we are starting to break and hold below the M2. So uh, as long as we're down here, we don't have a trade setup. And as long as we're below this, we don't have a trade setup. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this out.
So currently, as we stand right now, uh, no day trade setups. So we'll, we'll wait until the market turns bullish again. All right, <clears throat> it's uh, 6.46 a.m., it's taking a look. Uh, and we're having a little bit of rebound right now in the euros. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like on the full pivots. I'm not holding my breath on these at all. Uh, we are pulling back above the M2. We're still uh, ways away from any entries. This thing always gives me problems. There we go. So that's uh, a little bit of a head fake here, possibly, but uh, we are going to probably have problems right here at the central pivot. Um, and then here on the Euro Yen, we're uh, coming up to central pivot now, so it's interesting to see what happens. So that's a possible trade setup here. And uh, let's go ahead and see this here. So this is my central pivot right here. And uh, curious to see on how price reacts to my weekly central pivots. See if we get something like this and back down. Or if we get something more like this for tomorrow. Taking a look at everything else. We're just uh, really far gone on all the other pairs. So the euros are the only ones I'm watching at the moment. <clears throat> all right, 7.03 a.m. Just taking a look here at uh, how our central pivots are looking. Yep, as you can see, uh, we kicked off the central pivot. Let's see, where's my drawing tool? Right here, got that wick right on it. So that, uh, that type of rejection right there makes me lose confidence in bull market returning. Yeah, as you see, we came right up really close to central pivot. We may have another go at it. Um, the Euro Yen is not nearly as bearish as everything else. So we'll see. I'm interested uh, in seeing how that plays out. But yeah, it's uh, as far as right now goes, the Euro USD um, is uh, getting rejected from central pivot pretty much. Yep, that, that wick right there. And that's also the 200 EMA. All right, it is uh, 7.32 a.m. And quite interestingly, we are getting a little bit of a move uh, higher on the euros. So I'm going to dial in here on the... Uh, full pivots chart and see what's going on we are we're sitting slightly above the central pivot this could still be a rejection zone on both the euros um, but really our daily central pivot is way up here and this is also the sell zone all, all through here is the sell zone um, same thing here is my central pivot on the daily and this is all a sell zone for the weekly um, so I have a um, I have a sell zone on the weekly in here so really, what I really want to see is uh, I want to if it does I want to see like a build up and let me erase those lines here real quick. Uh, if we can get like some sort of a build up and then explosion out, um, you know, like some sort of a build up then an explosion out. This might end up just being a tomorrow's a tomorrow setup. So um, that's but either way, I have alerts set right now. Um, I'm using my other account for the alert since my alerts don't work on this uh, MetaTrader 4. If anybody knows how to fix that, um, it seems like I have like a limited amount of alerts to use before they just stop working altogether. You can see here, I'm gonna try to do an alert, trading alert, and nothing shows up here. Um, so I have to use this account for my alerts right here.
we'll keep you updated. All right, it's 11.36 uh, a.m. Taking a look at the market right now. And uh, you can see this right here, which is quite interesting. So we'll see what uh, comes of this. Either they continue all the way up and on, or these become like a double bottom, or it becomes a range bound market, where it just kind of consolidates more and more and more. Or they can even do something like this and down. So what we do is we're going to look at our pivots for some more guidance. Okay. Still below the M2. Pulled above the M2, so we'll mark this right here. Still below the M2. This is a setup for possibly tomorrow. This is a setup for possibly tomorrow. Just above the M2. Possible tomorrow. Here's your M2, so possible. Uh, not tomorrow, but the next day. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be the same thing here. Possible uh, next day, which is uh, Wednesday. So tomorrow's Tuesday. So let's go ahead and mark these out. Let's see here. It wouldn't be tomorrow on the Australian yen because our daily pivot's way down here. Mark these out. All right, here we go. Here's one. Well, no, the uh, daily central pivot is still here, so it needs to come up above the M2. Still has a little ways to go. Same thing here. We've got the daily pivot here. Actually, and it needs to come above. Actually, the M2 is way up here. It's such a small pivot zone. It needs to come up above this M2. This uh, daily pivot needs to come up above M2. This daily pivot up above M2. Just like this one right here. Daily pivot is above the M2, so that's valid. Daily pivot is above the M2, so that's valid. So, yeah, we only have... Uh, to a couple of valid setups for tomorrow. I'm going to mark this out once the uh, daily pivot comes above the M2. So yeah, we have a uh, valid setup for tomorrow. So what we still need though, what we still need is we need for price to let's say it ends here, right? So this is my zone for tomorrow so what we still need is for price to come down into the zone and during London session have the breakup there's my zone and for tomorrow to kind of come down into it and during the London session or the New York have the breakup All right, it's 11.58 a.m., um, and uh, we're still about three hours away from the New York close, and we are just getting push up from the euros, especially the euro dollar. We made it all the way through the, let's go ahead and see here. I believe uh, right down in here was the M2, then we had the weekly central pivot, and now we have the daily pivot right up in here, and that's exactly where we're at at the moment. So quite interestingly, I mean, we this was a resistance zone. We cut through it. This was a resistance zone. We cut through it and retested it. So um, yeah, that's a, a quite a reversal 
from the, the euro US dollar and we're also seeing um, confirmations of these V's here on the Aussie US dollar uh, here on the USD CAD CAD's always inverse to everything um, of course the yens are starting to copy the exact same motion and uh, here on the euro yen this my apologies um, yeah we never really had the big crash um, just kind of a consolidation and now we're coming right up to test the uh, daily central pivot on the euro yen so uh, I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on all of this right now we'll keep you updated all right so taking a quick look here we just had the turn of the day it's uh, 12 15 p.m um and uh yeah price here is still at the uh, central pivot on the euro usd look at the pound let's take a look at this in the full pivots look at that uh beautiful price came all the way down to the weekly take profit zone in Veed all the way back up to central pivot. Very interesting. And that filled the gap right here. This this whole gap right here. Gap filled. All right, so uh, lots of interesting setups uh, for later tomorrow and uh, later on this week. All right, it's uh, 1.30 p.m. So we're about an hour and a half away from the New York close. And as you can see, price is starting to stall out right at the daily central pivot. What a wild day this was. Right here is daily central pivot and uh, really close to uh, pivot. This is pivot right up here, so daily central pivot. So we came really, really close. We still get some movement going on right now. So we got an hour and a half till the uh, end of the day for the New York session. And even the Aussie came really close. All right, considering uh, we're so close from the uh, New York close, um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here uh, and do an upload and immediately start my next video. So if you don't wanna miss anything, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then.